everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson, and you're looking at our operatory here in San Dimas, California, where we have set up to make a few videos. Anyway, today we are going to perform a cementation of a gold inlay, finishing and polishing. And I'm also going to perform a gold foil procedure. I'm going to perform the gold foil on the buckle of tooth number 30, and after I prepared it in its appropriate shape, we'll show you how we take incremental pieces of gold and cold weld them together to make hopefully a beautiful final restoration. Wish me luck. Okay, as always, we start with the rubber dam isolation. I'm using a W2 clamp on the second molar and I'm using a Nicktone Blue medium weight rubber dam. I like this rubber dam because it does photograph really nicely. When we're inverting between the teeth, I like to make sure that the floss is always between the rubber dam and the tooth, and I hug the tooth to invert the rubber dam interproximally. When we do it this way, we will not need to use any type of individual ligature ties to hold the rubber dam down. If you floss properly, the dam will stay in place. We're now going to use chlorhexidine 2% scrub, and this is being used to clean out the cavity before we cement the inlay. You notice that I cemented the occlusal on the second molar earlier before the video. I haven't finished this one down yet. We're going to try in the inlay, and this is made from JRVT Palladium Free Gold, which is made, the gold is made by Jensen Industries. It's a very nice gold. And we can push it all the way to place because I have no problem popping these out with a little spoon excavator. Notice that the margins have not been finished. They have been left unfinished in the laboratory on purpose. I made the inlay with this in mind. Now we're going to prepare the class one buckle pit gold foil on tooth number 30. After we condense that, we're going to finish and polish the entire quadrant. Let's get started. Even though we have a nice isolation with rubber dam, I like to place a 27 clamp on the tooth I'm working on and then use this material by Brassler that is a flowable product that can seal the edges to make sure that absolutely not even the slightest drop of moisture seeps through, which as we know in gold foils is disastrous. Sometimes it's nice to smooth the surface that you're going to be working on prior to actually preparing. We find that this will allow us to create a margin that's a little bit more smooth. So here we are, ready to remove this old composite, and I'm going to utilize a 6830-010 diamond. These are really efficient when used in the electric handpiece to remove old restoration and caries. At this point, it's a teardrop shape, which is going to be great to keep this from rotating when the foil is placed. We're going to follow this up with some internal retention utilizing a 34 inverted cone. But we are going to need to flare the walls so that we have more of a favorable geometry when placing the gold. And then we're going to further bevel the enamel with a 7901 utilizing that bottom half of the burr to create a little bit of divergence to the enamel. All of this is being done to protect the enamel while we're condensing. After we use 2% chlorhexidine, let's take a look at the foil options that we have. And this is my gold foil box. And all of these foil pellets were rolled by my assistant, Millie, who's really capable of handling gold foil. And I have different types of gold here in different sizes. The ones we're going to be utilizing today are the Easy Gold, which is a powdered gold wrapped in a gold wrapper right here, and we're going to use gold foil pellets. So let's take a look at my gold foil setup. I've got the box with all the gold, a Woodbury Myers instrument. This is a little passing instrument. We heat up the gold and burn off any impurities. It's not the temperature we're looking for. It's the, the, the effect of the flame to burn off any residual uh, ammonia or any oils that may have gotten on the foil. The rest of those instruments are condensers of different shapes and we're going to show you these condensers when we get to the foil condensation step in just a second. And then we use a flame with 
pure ethanol so that we don't in any way contaminate the foil. So let's start with the Easy Gold. And Easy Gold needs to be heated up in a very different way than gold foil. We need to burn off some wax that's been used to get the powdered gold to stick together. So it gets flamed a little bit longer in the flame. And then we're going to place this as our initial increment. And you kind of condense this a little bit like it was an amalgam. And you're pushing into the walls and you're doing this with some force. And you're trying to get it to get into the retentive features. It flows pretty nicely and it creates a lot of good filling volume. You notice that I'm bracing the, the foil with another condenser while I'm packing it into the cavity. Seems like we have a good start. After we flame the gold, easy gold in this case, we're going to pass it off into the cavity with a Woodbury Myers holding instrument. This instrument's not really good for condensing, but it's pretty good at placing the foil in the right position. Notice that this procedure is definitely a four-handed dentistry procedure. Millie is flaming the gold and bringing it to the cavity and I'm working on the condensation part. Right now I'm using a Farrier number one condenser. Millie is tapping on the end of the instrument with a special mallet and I am positioning the end of the condenser very precisely where I want it to go and she's timing the mallet blows so that she's hitting when I'm pushing against the foil at that same moment. It takes a little bit of practice to get this timing down just right. We can also use a thing called an electro mallet. They're not made anymore and they're hard to find, but electro mallet was a nice invention because it allowed you to work without having an assistant malleting the foil. Here's another easy gold, and our goal for the easy gold is to fill the cavity about two thirds full with this very dense, easy to fill product. It's about 10 times more dense in terms of the amount of material that is present in the ball. But the problem is it doesn't polish quite as well as just pure gold foil. In other words, gold foil being a piece of 99.999% pure gold laid out into an extremely thin sheet. The easy gold is powdered gold mixed with wax which is then wrapped in a foil wrapper. And we have to burn off this wax in the flame before we can place it in the cavity. So you, I've already done that off camera, and this is the easy gold being placed. At this point, we're approximately two thirds, maybe three quarters of the way full, and we're gonna switch over to the cohesive gold foil. Cohesive because it sticks to subsequent layers quite easily. You can see there that we're shy of the margins and we have to finish the rest with the key cohesive gold foil. Notice with just a little bit of a touch it sticks very well. This, these are the van der Waals forces that are holding this into position. I really like the Tucker number one instrument because of its bayonet shape and its wide end. So you notice how it looks like a little inverted cone. And this is really great because you can condense a larger area and you can also direct it such that you don't crush the margins as you're filling. Performing a very small gold foil like this might seem like an easy thing, but it actually takes a lot of attention to detail doesn't take a lot of time. We can do a foil like this in about 30 or 40 minutes and it's well worth the time because as you know this is a restoration that's going to last the patient a lifetime. But it does take attention to detail to make sure that you're overlapping your strokes so you get adequate condensation so the gold sticks to the subsequent layers. You also want to make sure that you don't have the condenser touch the edge of the preparation because you can crush the enamel and that can cause some scarring and irregularity in the outline of the procedure. I'm now using the Fair number one and the Tucker number one 
alternating between the two, using them in such a way to get the adequate contours built in and that we condense against the margins, always with gold between the condenser and the margin. We never want to put the condenser directly on the two structure. You can see that it takes a lot more pellets of gold foil compared to the easy gold. And this is what I was talking about earlier, that you've got about 10 times the density of gold in a ball of easy gold compared to a rolled ball pellet of gold foil. You can see that we can try to develop a little bit of the contours of the buckle surface in that there is a little groove down the middle of this gold foil. Right now she's tapping as I'm placing the tip of the tucker number one in the right place. Each foil pellet looks large compared to what you need to fill, but it becomes incredibly flat as you apply the necessary force to each subsequent layer. You never want to place the foil in the exact middle of the preparation and condense straight into this cavity because you end up getting a mound of gold that builds up in the middle and this is very difficult to deal with because you can't condense the edges very well. So what you want to do is you want to saucerize your fill. In other words, make it look concave as you're filling it until the very end and then you place remaining gold pellets to get the contour that you want. You can see here that we're coming to the very end because we're starting to add the gold directly in the middle and we're working our way across in little half millimeter steps. It's very common to overfill the gold foil so that you make sure that you've sealed all the margins. That's okay but it is going to require a little bit more cleanup and removal of excess gold when you're completed. When we have enamel margins, excess gold is pretty easy to remove without worry. However, when you're working on dentin, like in the case of a class 5 gold foil, we like to remove the foil completely as we go because we don't want to use a rotary instrument on the dentin. You could damage the dentin very easily. We're now at the final layer where we're going to use a Varney foot condenser to confirm that we have adequate contour and seal at the marginal interface. Notice how the tip of the Varney foot is pushing away from the center towards the margins. This entire procedure takes no more than about 20 minutes. We're now going to utilize a sharp spoon or a cleoid discoid to remove excess gold beyond the margin, keeping the instrument on the enamel and the gold at the same time. Another instrument that's very helpful is called a Spratly knife. The Spratly knife can also be used to burnish the surface a little bit and initiate a harder outer surface. Once we've got the gold to the right marginal seal, we're now ready to perform some polishing utilizing some brownie abrasives with plenty of water and to keep it cool and a light touch to remove any little surface imperfections. Now we're on to the polishing aspect with the four flower pumice. Utilizing this with 
a light touch over the surface and then I'm, when I'm ready I'll ask her to dry and then she'll suction and blow and remove the powder that's on the surface. And we just continue this exact same procedure from the number four flower pumice to the 15 micron aluminum oxide and then we finish with the one micron aluminum oxide at that point we know we're completed with the procedure. While I'm using the one micron aluminum oxide I'm going to get this all over the surface and then at some point I'm going to then ask her to start to suction and blow in order to, for us to get the highest possible luster on these restorations, the inlays and the gold. One of the things I really like about GRVT Gold is that it mimics the color of gold foil really, really nicely. So let's just let this finish and you can see that the result I think was decent. Uh, we had nice spinning castings and we have a nice gold foil. And I think the patient was very, very happy uh, she didn't want to have any gold show, and when she smiles, she really has to pull her lip back to let people see the gold in her mouth. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this short, but hopefully interesting video on gold foil. Take care.